there is a really important link between the brain and the heart that I want to teach you about neuroscientifically. So that means in, in terms of actually your, your um, neuro responses in the way you feel and the way you act, and also just in terms of what you draw into. So the first thing you need to understand is that your heart is the vibrational center of your human experience. Your brain is the thought and the creative center. So your brain is what's creating the idea of what you want to have, where you want to go, everything else, which is why when your brain is wounded, it creates a wounded idea. When your subconscious mind holds on to those old traumas, it creates a wounded idea of what you want, which is why you direct yourself into those wounded relationships. But your heart is the vibrational center, which means your heart is actually the attraction space of what comes in. Now, as I mentioned to you guys yesterday, your heart is one of the most powerful natural um, electromagnetic organ, uh, organs or electro, uh, electromagnetic functional pieces that exists across any animal species. The human heart is an extremely, extremely powerful electromagnetic piece. And for us as human beings, it's extremely responsible, like we talked about, for how we project our feelings for how we allow ourselves to direct our feelings. Now, we tend to feel our feelings in our stomach, as I mentioned to you yesterday, because that has a lot of like neurocenters in there. But how we tend to project our feelings comes from the heart, which is the vibrational center. If you want to think about it in terms of the masculine and the feminine dynamic, the yin and the yang, the brain tends to be more of the masculine idea of creating, of having an idea, of drawing a structure of what you want, of defining where you want to go. And your heart is more of the, the feeling way to it, the vibrational way to it, which is why even if you wanted to manifest anything, for example, in the art of manifesting itself, there's also masculine and feminine. Your idea of what you want to manifest, your visualization, your dream, your hope, your goal, that's all very like brain centric. But your heart is where you step into the elements of trust, where you step into elements of faith, of allowing, of like sinking with like the powers of the universe. This is more of the feminine vibration. This is more of the allowing. So in manifestation as well, it's not enough just to visualize what you want. You have to feel into the vibration of what you want and you have to live on that vibration. Remember we talked about the law of attraction yesterday, that the law of attraction states that it's not what you want that you will get. It is how you exist, how you vibrate that you will receive in correspondence to that. So your brain gives you an idea of how you should vibrate saying, hey, I want to have a beautiful relationship. Okay, this is the idea. Your heart must align with that level of vibration to say, okay, now we're in sync. I'm vibrating as if someone loved themselves and they were in a beautiful relationship. Here's an awesome question for you. If you were in a really healthy, beautiful vibration, would you have the a re re relationship? Would you have the vibration of scarcity? Would you have the vibration of fear? Would you have the vibration of clinginess or attaching or running away? No. If you were in a beautiful, loving, healthy relationship, you'd have the vibration of safety. You'd have the vibration of peace. You'd have the vibration of give and take. You'd have the vibration of trust. You'd have the vibration of playfulness, of joy, of curiosity, all of those higher vibrations. So the heart is the vibrational center of the brain. And that's why I wrote here, the, the heart is really in many ways the body center of the brain. And what this means, and I'm just gonna explain a little bit of science here, so bear with me, but this might give you some reality. The ANS is the autonom autonomic nervous system. And in this aut autonomic nervous system, you have your the top of your the head of it, which is your brain, and your heart, which is the next functional piece of it, which means it's not just your brain that tells you how to feel. It's like, for example, if you go through a fear, then your brain induces cortisol or adrenaline, and then your heart changes the way it pumps and your lungs change the way they breathe. It's also actually the reverse. This is something called a reverse feedback loop in science, which is one of the most powerful ways that a good or healthy um, therapist or a healer would help you to progress which is that you can change the way your brain thinks based on changing the way your heart and your lungs function. That's why breath work is one of the most powerful methods of healing because when you're breathing, you're not actually telling your brain don't think. You're telling your lungs to breathe differently, to slow down, to create a vibration, to get into resonance. Now, as your lungs slow down, they automatically send a message through the, the 
autonomic nervous system to your heart saying, hey, we don't need that much oxygen. We're not in a fearful place. When you're afraid, you breathe fast because your heart needs the oxygen to pump to the rest of the body for flight and, fight and flight. But when you're calm, your lungs don't need as much oxygen. They're slow and easy, which means it tells your heart, hey, I am already at peace. So your heart starts to feel the peace and then your heart starts to send a reverse feedback message to your brain saying, hey, I know you were trying to send the cortisol and adrenaline rushing through our body, but why don't you give it a break? Why don't you give it a pause? We don't actually need it. We're in a place of calm, of peace, of safety, et cetera. So this is important for you because talk therapy is generally just about speaking through a problem, which is very cognitive. And it doesn't give you the healing you always need through your body, your heart, and your lungs because your heart is that vibrational center. But somatic therapy, which is a combination, or somatic therapy is the body, so the best is the combination of both, is where through your body, you're teaching your mind, you're teaching your nervous system, you're teaching your whole experience to find love and peace. Now, I'm bringing this up to you today because if I don't highlight the importance of your body, a lot of people think that, oh, my body is just a shell. And everything is just like my mind or my spirit. No, your body is actually the temple that your spirit chose. In fact, the only physical thing you take with you your entire life is your body. It's your temple. It's the space that tells you what your mind's going through and that you can also tell your mind what to go through. So as we go through the next few stages, I'm bringing this up because I want you to understand the foundation that... If you can learn to healthily manipulate, manipulate's not a bad word, by the way, we just use it very often in a bad context. Manipulate just means to shift or change around. If you can healthily manipulate your lungs and the way your heart functions, you can change what your brain thinks you need to have or create in your life. And that's incredibly powerful. It's especially powerful when you've gone through trauma when you've gone through heartbreak, when you've gone through rejection, when people haven't showed up for you, because your idea of life is very functional in your subconscious mind. But if you can change the way you feel about life, if you can change the way that you're vibrating about life, that you're existing in a moment, you can slowly change your ideas of life. And that is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Now, what I want to talk to you about, like we said, that the heart is incredibly powerful in terms of this vibrating center, you know, as, um, you know, they, let's talk about it as the energetic space of the body. So what happens if the heart has gone through some pains in the past or has gone through some damage or has gone through, you know, trauma or whatever else? Let's check on the next slide. This is what tends to happen when you go through damage to the heart. And damage to the heart tends to happen primarily when you go through a heavily painful emotional response. When you go through just a, um, you know, if you go through a, a challenging situation in your life where you're not attaching a lot of your emotional self to, it will not destroy you. Because most of the time our emotions are attached to something we're very personal to or we're attached to. So even for an avoidant, by the way, they have a strong sense of emotional attachment to their hobbies, to their profession, to their work, uh, to their travel, to all of the things that are not very human because they have like a very baseline sense of like emotional feedback from them. But they attach to them. So when they lose their job, they feel lost. When they lose a pet, they'll feel more lost than when they lose a relationship maybe. Or, you know, when uh, something isn't working out in their life in terms of finance or something else, they feel more distraught because that's where they're putting their emotional sense. But that's also where their heart is leading them and, and vibrating and attaching to. On the same end, for the anxious attachers or people who like empaths and stuff, feelings, feelings with other human beings is where you are most sensitive. And if you're most sensitive, it means you're most vulnerable. And if you're most vulnerable, it also means there's potential for you to get hurt there. And so if you get hurt in these spaces, which is rejection, someone not maybe choosing you, someone maybe not wanting you, someone um, maybe trying to make you feel small when you want their love, any of those things, then that creates a damage to the heart. And the first thing that it does is it creates a block or a wall around the heart. You know why? Because you can't have a heart that doesn't function. So you can't kill the heart. You can't break down the heart. Even when you say heart break, it really is actually a heart block. That's what's actually happened. Because technically your heart physically and emotionally has to keep functioning for you to stay alive. 
So when you have a block to the heart, the block is really about the fear. And so the heart starts to become very fear dominant. What if I'm not going to receive love again? And so your heart starts to either close down or it starts to cling on to somebody else. What if they're going to reject me again? So your heart now becomes either overcompensating or undercompensating. But your heart, which is the vibrational center, if this is the median, if this is where you want to vibrate, if like in the middle is where you want to function, whenever you're dominant by fear, your vibrational center just goes completely awry. It goes completely whack, which is why this is going to be super important for you, which is why when you want to get into relationships and love, your heart aligns with your brain and chooses the people who can't love you because it's just proving the brain true. They're both aligned and they're both attracting what completes and continues the cycle that you're now used to. Isn't that crazy? That the heart and the brain can align so powerfully, even when it's something that's wounded and not very good for you. And there is a principle I do, I'm not going to teach you now. This is a principle of manifestation. I teach it in like my advanced programs. There's something called brain heart coherence, wherein when the brain and the heart vibrate at the same frequency or are on the same page, basically, they will always manifest whatever they're in line with, always. But for most of us, because the brain has been damaged before and the heart or the brain has been like, um, you know, has wounded ideas of love, the heart has been hurt before. They're always in alignment with scarcity, with a lack of love. So when we get into dating, we're automatically manifesting right from date one, someone who's not good for us. And so when you continue without doing the healing, it tends to become a pattern to the point where you say, all men are assholes or all women are gold diggers, or all relationships out there are shitty or all dating apps are fucked or whatever else becomes your state of being because that's your dominant state of vibration. So unless you start to create both of these essential elements of healing. We talked yesterday about nervous system first, subconscious mind, inner child, and now coming to the heart, the body, the emotional self. When you now start to create these different elements of healing, you're shifting your scale of like vibration to the other end. You're shifting your scale of alignment back to the other end where you can start creating more supporting things for yourself. Now, this is the biggest thing that I wanted to teach you, which is right in the middle over here about what happens when you have damages to the heart it prevents you from giving or from receiving. This is a big one. And why it's important for you to understand that there are blocks, because the block is what manifests into preventing you from giving or receiving. And when you get into a relationship, if you get into a relationship, take for example, I have a car, right? And this car is like, um, you know, I want to put it into the races. But this car has been like, you know, I haven't really taken care of the engine. It's been out in the rain, so it's rusty. I put the exact same car in the race. I want to win the race. That's all I really want. But I'm taking the same car and putting it in the race. Am I going to win the race? Am I going to come into the top five? I mean, maybe, who knows if I'm extremely skilled, but more likely not, right? So working on ourselves is really just about tuning up our car. So that when you put yourself in a place of where you want to give or receive, you're more able to create it with success. Now, I said that uh, blocks in the heart prevent from giving or receiving. For people who identify as anxious attach attachers, you're extremely good at giving. You're very good at showing up for other people. You're very good at being able to, um, you know, share your heart so freely, right? I mean, you guys know that like if, if you had to ever have an emotion, unless, you know, someone consciously shut you down in that moment, it just comes out so easily and freely. In fact, in fact, sometimes you're like, I don't know how to manage this or understand what this emotion means because you're so good at giving, but the receiving is where you don't know how to do. It. And it's funny because people don't realize that they think as anxious attaches, oh, I'm ready for love. Like I'm the one who's loving. So that means I'm probably capable of love. Why is love not coming my way? Because your vibrational like captain, your vibrational like compass is literally in the wrong direction because you don't know how to receive. So listen to this, because again, it's going to open up your mind. If I don't know how to receive, what's the best place to put myself into into a place with someone who doesn't know how to give it to me, correct? Someone who's not capable of giving it to me. So if I don't know how to receive, and this is my pattern, and this is what I know, it makes so much sense to be with someone who's emotionally unavailable. Someone who doesn't know how to give me the love I want, because then I can prove to my brain 
that my ideas of my relationships are true. And then I can continue from my heart to just continue to function in the vibrational space it's used to, which is giving, 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 and never receiving. And then the craziest thing is we resent the other person for not loving us when we're the ones who put ourselves in the same position. Are you going to be angry at the desert for not giving you water when you're thirsty? And you're the one who chose to go there? I mean, you're just forever going to be hitting your head in the sand, right? This is what I say to people that if you want a loving relationship, you have to also be conscious about where you're putting your heart, where you're putting your mind. And that's a responsibility we don't want to take because that work is harder. That's the inner work. That's where we show up for ourselves. That's where you look in the mirror and you see your demons about where you're still blocked, about what's still holding you back, about where your vibration is, is going. And that part is hard because that's the part, the, the hardest things that we've, we've never had to do is to ever love ourselves. So now to learn that is so much harder than for me to put my hands into someone else who will actually use or abuse or not know how to love me. That's easier. Crazy as it is, but that's easier to our nervous systems. So our principle today is really about learning to let go of some of those blocks, to be understand, to understand that like our heart, which is again a projection of our brain's like emotional center, there's our vibrational place. It deserves to receive. And I'm focusing a lot on receiving here because predominantly the, the people on this like space are people who need to learn how to receive. And I can tell you something which is incredibly important that when you learn to just collect love in your heart, you don't have to worry about giving or receiving. At that point, they both happen in flow. You attract people only who can show up for you. And you're so powerful that you don't need to put yourself in a dating app or in matrimony.com or whatever to find the most successful relationship you need. And I'm not shitting on any of those things. But I am saying that when you're in tune with your heart and how you vibrate and the love you deserve, you will draw it into you. Because what the heart's also responsible for is trust, faith, receiving, allowing, serendipity, all of those magnificent things that are about luck, that are about chance, that are about meeting someone in a coffee shop, meeting someone at a bus stop. I met my wife on an airplane. Because when you start to align your brain and your heart, you create a high standard of, I don't want to go and manufacture love. I want to create love. And I'm more powerful than, I want you to write down actually for yourselves. I am more powerful than manufacturing love. I can create love. Part of creating something is being willing to receive the magic that comes from it. Part of creating something is about trial and error. Part of creating something is about being fearless, right? It's about being free. And that's what I want to teach you all. That's what you all truly deserve. And the most essential element is, I don't want you to go out there and think you have to chase love because that's what you learned in your past. Are you hurting from shame, loneliness, toxic relationships? Do you want to break that pattern and create a beautiful, loving life for yourself? Well, my name is Yats, and I'm an inner work and relationship guru. And I have helped thousands of women and men from all around the world learn to become their best selves and have the lives that they truly want and desire. This channel was designed for you to be able to heal those old wounds, be able to become and elevate your best self, and to you to love your life, really, that you have right now. And I offer an eight-week program called The Gauntlet, which takes you on this amazing journey of healing those wounds. And I also offer in-person live retreats all around the world where you can access that same level of healing and empowerment. I want you to do something for you today. I want you to watch some of these videos. And if these videos hit close to home, they resonate with you and they're giving you some inspiration, then I want you to subscribe and share it with somebody else who needs it. These videos aren't just for someone to consume. They're meant to inspire people to take action. And if you want to take action in your own life, jump in the comments, watch the videos, send me a DM at the inner yats on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.